the 100 hour inspection is complete and this machine looks brand new. I want to show you today how I did the maintenance and got it to this point where again it looks like it's brand new ready for that next project. Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Well today is maintenance day in the shop and I have to be able to do the maintenance on the CNC for newbie, the new car. Now I've had this for quite a while now and I've got about a hundred hours of runtime on it and it's time to be able to inspect it, clean it, and grease the linear bearings. And I want to show you how I do all that today. So let's get started. Now, after the last carb that I did, all I did is just very quickly uh, vacuumed it off. And you can see there's still a lot of sawdust all over this machine. I even have sawdust down here that I did not vacuum up. So there's a lot of just cleanup that I need to do first. And you can see right here where the machine came down to this point and the linear bearings actually pushed the sawdust to there. So the first step that I want to do is go through and clean this machine entirely, and then we'll take it to the next step. So I'm going to turn the camera off for a few minutes, get this all vacuumed and cleaned up, and then we'll go to the next step that I do on my 100-hour check. Now on my CNC machine, I do not have the dust uh, control or a vacuum connected to it. So as a result, a lot of extra sawdust is generated. Now I do that really for two reasons. One, I just haven't done it. And two, I want you guys to be able to see when I do the carving. Now in addition to doing the vacuuming, I also take an old paintbrush and that helps get into those little cracks and crevices that the vacuum just doesn't get. And this makes it where I can get all of that sawdust out of there and get it very, very clean. Now you do have to be careful when you're working around these wires because you don't want to disconnect anything, but yet you still want to get that dust out of there. So you can see I am taking care to be able to make sure that I don't loosen any wires. And you can also see where the vacuum cleaner just didn't get all of the dust, but this brush certainly makes the difference. Because I want to be able to get the machine back as clean and new looking as I possibly can. Now if you look at this on that little homing switch, there's that little cover that has come loose. So I'm going to slide that wire out of the way so I can get to it. And I'm going to put that cover right back up onto that micro switch. And these are the small things that I like to be able to catch when I'm doing these inspections. Now that I've got everything clean, I want to go through on these little junction boxes and make sure that the wires are all tight and connected. So all I really do is just barely put a little bit of pressure on those wires to make sure that they're still tight. Now in some of those really hard to get places, I'll grab the uh, air gun and be able to blow off that dust. Then I'll come back with the paintbrush and dust off and get rid of all that sawdust. And with the air compressor, to be able to blow off that dust, the brush, as well as the vacuum cleaner, I can get this machine looking brand new again. The next thing I want to do is take this little T20 driver and be able to remove the cover from the router. I want to inspect the brushes because this is about halfway through the life of the brushes and I want to see how they're doing. So I just removed these four screws from the top of this and the cover just lifts right off. Now this is not hard to do and it really doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to be able to do it. And if it doesn't lift off 
quickly, then you need to just check the screw is probably still holding it. Now you can see a little bit of dust in here, and I want to be able to take the uh, compressor and blow off this dust as well and get it completely clean. Once that's done, then we're going to take a look at the brushes themselves. Now there's two brushes in here, and this is one of them right here, and is plugged in at this point, and then there's another one on the back side. Now I can see, just by looking at this, this is the little pin that holds it in place. And if I pull that up and set it over there, you can see that the brush is still right at the end. So there's really no need to take this out, but to be able to show you, I just lift that off and then I can lift out this brush. This brush still looks almost brand new, even after just under a hundred hours of use. You can see that it does have some wear, but it's certainly not time to change it. So I'm going ahead that when I change it, it'll be worn down to about this point. So this brush is holding up extremely well. So we'll slip that back in and we'll put this back on. There we go. Then we'll take this little clip and we'll put that right back in place. And I'm not going to bother to inspect the back one because this one looks so good. There's really no need to change it. So this part has now been cleaned out. The brushes have been inspected. And I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on. Now... For those who ask, this router does stay on one. It never comes off of that one setting. As far as the speed, that is plenty fast enough. Okay, this is now finished. It's been inspected, so it's ready to go. I've checked the micro switch up here. And you can see that that little cover was off. That's back on. I checked each of the wires in here on both sides. Now check the wires over here and make sure that they were all okay. And I've also checked this micro switch. Now even though I don't use these homing switches, I still check them and make sure that they're in good shape. Now over here, I've already cleaned off the linear bearings. I've checked out this. I've checked out all my wiring, they're in good shape. And I'll just slightly touch them and put just a little bit of pressure on them and see if they're loose. And that's all in good shape as well. One of the things that I'll also do is go around and double check and make sure that all of these are tight. And they are. I don't know if I got that one or not. Yeah, that's good and tight. So I want to double check because if this gets loose, then it can move and it'll get out of square. One of the other things that I'll do is go through and wipe off these rails and make sure that I have all the sawdust and the grease off of them. And there's really not much there because I do this on a regular basis. And let's look at the other side because this other side gets more sawdust than this one. little bit of sawdust there but it's really not bad and this is a largely due to regular maintenance of the machine there's a little bit built up right down in there there we go now if you'll notice i've got some sawdust inside of here and i'm gonna go ahead and get the vacuum cleaner and get that out Huh. 
And I'm also going to check this side to make sure it's tight. And the next thing I want to do is wipe off these rods as well. Now I could turn the machine on and run it. What I like to do is much maintenance without the machine running as I possibly can. And that will gather up some of the grease. And you can see there's a build up here. Now I got a little bit more sawdust in here that I need to get off. There we go. And I'll wipe that clean. Now as far as the control box, let me move this. I got this little conversion chart and I use it. I'll just leave it sitting up here all the time. On one of the videos I'm going to have to do is where I'm going to actually make uh, a new chart that I can put on the wall. But for now, I just leave that up here. But basically all I do with this is dust it off and I make sure that these are still tight. And I really do that every time that I use them for the probe, but still and all, I just wiggle them a little bit to make sure that they're secure. Everything else is pretty well stable, and I don't have to worry about it. And I'll just dust off the back uh, plug. And that's all that I do with that. Put that back where it belongs. A number of you have asked, how are these strips holding up? Remember in one of the earlier videos, these were attached to the waste board underneath just with the glue and tape method. And they have held up extremely well. I have not had any problem with them, except for one. One problem that I had with my own doing is when I screwed a project down, it didn't go all the way through and it lifted, the screw itself lifted the board back up. Other than that, this has worked out real well. Now, one of the things that I have uh, that I can tell you, I really don't use these slots that much because I use the glue and tape method the most, or I actually will screw it down for the project. And in some cases, I'll just grab the nail gun and shoot a couple of nails into the project and it holds it just fine. So as far as these slots, I don't use them as much as I thought that I would. So if I ever need to replace this top, and I'm sure that I will, because I always dig into this a little bit, um, I'll probably replace it with just a half inch piece of the uh, MDF and move on. Now the last thing that I want to do is check for the squareness. <clears throat> and it really doesn't take anything special. This is just a stick that's cut off square, and that works just fine. But I just have two sticks and I'll need a pencil. And I use a very sharp point. I'll go ahead and get as sharp as I can. And sometimes you can even use the knife and just score it with the knife. But I'm gonna set this at each corner. Make sure that this is joined in the middle just by holding it. And then I'm going to mark a line. And then I'm just gonna take and rotate this and put that right back over here. Slide that right up to that point. And then I'll strike a line again. And with that perfectly lined up, I'm going to mark that. Then you can take a look and see that that pencil line is exactly the same place. That's what you're looking for. You want no variation in that. So now I've verified that the machine is actually square. Okay, the last thing we need to do is go ahead and grease the linear bearings. Now it's real hard to get a good camera angle, but what I need to be able to do is just take this Allen wrench 
and be able to open this up right here and remove this screw. I'm going to take that out. We'll set it aside and then the grease will go right into this opening right here. And the Allen wrench that I'm using is actually a two millimeter. Now I contacted the folks over at CNC for Newbie and asked them exactly what grease to be able to use. And what they recommended was this one right here. This is the Valvoline Heavy Duty Crimson Grease to be able to use. Now they also said if you can't find this, any heavy duty multi-purpose tacky grease would work. Now the other thing that you're gonna need when you do this, you're gonna need a very long needle point to be able to put this grease into that opening. And this will attach to the end of the hose on the grease gun. And again, I'll put a link to that in the description below also. Now you can see I have this needle in position on the end of the uh, grease gun hose. And if I squeeze the handle, you can see that very thin stream come out. So that's good and clean. And then I'm going to put this right down inside of there. And then I'll be able to squeeze the crease into it. And I'll pull it out just a little bit. And I can see that it's going in. And when it comes out like that, I've got plenty of grease. So I'm just going to wipe off that tip. Set this off to the side. And then I'm going to put this screw back in. Now you don't need to tighten this real tight. Just need it to have it snug just a little bit. And then I want to wipe off any excess grease that's on there. And that's the first one done. Then I'll move on to the rest of them. Now for this next one, I wanted to be able to get a little bit wider angle for you to be able to show you exactly what I'm doing. Because oftentimes when you're so close up, it's hard to get the big picture on what's actually happening. So here all I'm doing is just taking that screw out and I'm going to set that screw off to the side. And I want to make sure that I don't drop this screw. Even having it drop into those slots would be a real pain in the neck to try to get out. So I've got it set there. And then I'm just going to grab the grease gun and slip it right into the end of that linear bearing and put that grease into it. And it doesn't take a whole lot. Then I just wipe off the needle so it keeps everything clean. And then it's time to put that screw back in. And I want to hang on to that screw. I do not want that screw to get away and fall on the floor. Don't want to have to go hunt that down. And then I just tighten it back in. And again, it does not have to be very tight. Just a little snug. And that's all that's necessary. So hopefully, by being able to have a real good close-up of what's happening and then showing you this view, where it's a little bit wider angle to show you how if this process works will make it easier when you do this on your machine. And of course, the last thing, let's just wipe everything down so it's clean. Then I'm going to repeat the process. And the only thing that I do is just literally set the grease gun on the waste board. And then that way I can just squeeze the handle and get that grease right into that linear bearing. Now the process to grease these linear bearings is not difficult. They're mounted so that these access screws to be able to put the grease in is actually easy to be able to get to. So it's not difficult. It's important to be able to grease these bearings to be able to keep them working properly. And the manufacturer had suggested approximately 100 hours. If you have heavy use, or in my case where you don't have the dust boot, you probably want to do it more often. But it really depends on how you use your machine in your shop. The 100 hour guideline is just that. It's a guideline. And you can see in real time that it does not take a lot of time to be able to grease each of these linear bearings. 
And now that I can just put that screw back in and snug it up, again, you don't want it to over tighten this because this is going into a plastic housing and you don't want to over tighten it. And then, of course, wipe off the excess grease at the end so that it leaves everything nice and clean. Now, the last thing you do, we need to remove these two screws from each side and that allows the gantry to move freely. And then from there, we're gonna put some grease right in this area on both sides. So that's one. I'll move over to the other side and do the other one. And now that I've got both sides greased, I can just slide this back over and I'll line it up and I'll put the screws back in and nothing will be out of alignment. There we go. Now I'll put the two screws on the other side and it'll be done. Now this linear bearing on the back side is not hard to get to either. This is one of the reasons I have wheels on my table so that I can be able to pull this out and go exactly where I need to go with it. There we go. That's real time. That's it. On the back side of the machine, I do the same thing. I look at these little junction boxes, make sure that all the wires are tight. Now this was painter's tape that I put along here. I want to just make sure that it's still holding because that's keeping the wires in. And then the same thing on this side. I double check these wires to make sure that they're all connected good. And you can see up top from the back side, everything looks good in this area also. Well, the 100 hour inspection is completely done now. And I must say the machine looks brand new. It looks like it's never had anything carved on it. And that's quite frankly the way it should because I don't want to have any type of maintenance problem when I do the carving. I also want to say that this is a fantastic machine and it's really relatively maintenance free. There's not really a whole lot that you have to do to this machine. And yes, I probably go overboard with making sure that everything, uh, every nut and bolt is still tight and checked. So there you go. It took about an hour to be able to do the complete maintenance from top to bottom on this machine. And now that gives me a lot of confidence to know that this machine is ready to do a lot more carving over the next 100 hours because everything has been checked from top to bottom. Even the brushes on the router, all the nuts and bolts, even verify that it was still square. And that's crucial if for any of you guys out there that like to do tiling type projects. So I hope that you liked this video today. If you did, by all means, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there and the little bell notification next to it so that you won't miss out on any of the videos that I upload. So until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.